let's touch on that a little bit more so growing up you know there's certain things that i think a lot of the you know all of the hawaii athletes mm-hmm. that's how hawaii is mm-hmm. we support all of the hawaii athletes yep. you know they represent the state make everyone so proud and yep. everything but what people don't understand sometimes is all the sacrifices the yeah. hard work to get you there you know yeah and it started when you were a young age yeah. right mm-hmm. so let's talk about that you know kind of before you even got into punahou mm-hmm. what was some of the discipline like what yeah. were you striving to do did you know already that you wanted to play in college you know when yeah. was that dream kind of established as something that you wanted to do yeah well it's funny that you use that the words what mm-hmm. you wanted to do yes that is huge mm-hmm. because it wasn't always what i wanted to do got it you know it was what my dad wanted me to do mm-hmm. you know a kid a kid has dreams and aspirations but a kid like like myself there's thought there's there are times where i was like man i want to play football oh, i want to play basketball oh, i want to play football oh, i want to play basketball mm-hmm. you know i, I jump back and forth oh, i want to be a pilot you know <laughs> but it was because i always wanted to make my parents proud mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the times kids do things just because they want their dad to be proud of them. You know, it's not necessarily because they want to be good at it. Mm -hmm. Like I could have the best game, but if my dad wasn't proud of me, it wouldn't mean that much to me. You know, but if I did something like I think there's times where I did. I played in some sports where I came in last place, like track. (laughs) And my dad was proud of me and it made me feel good, Mm -hmm. you know, and there were like for instance there was we played st louis was it st louis yes st louis uh my senior year we lost to him the first game the first time we played him because we played st louis twice we lost to him i had 22 tackles that game 22 bro in the game i missed three tackles three or four my dad was disappointed in me because i missed a three or four so you see the contrast between the two like my whole life growing up as a young local boy was like to make my my parents proud mm-hmm. you know and so a lot of the times again it goes back to parents like you have a huge responsibility with your children of how they develop mm-hmm. because it wasn't until i grew older that my dad was so strategic in how he did i remember my dad trained me since i was five years old mm-hmm. my dad trained me the whole reason why so and the whole reason why i was number five was because my dad asked me and I remember we were going down Nani Loa Loop in La Ia, and he asked me, son, what you want to be when you grow up? And I told him, I'm going to be a football player. And I said that. Why? Because I wanted my dad to be, be happy that I said that. <laughs> I said, dad, I want, to be, I, want, I want to be a football player. Mm-hmm. And my dad said, do you want to be a, a football player or do you want to be the best football player in the state? And I told him, I'm five years old. Yeah. Oh, dad, I want, to be a, I want to be the best football player in the state. If any parent thinks that the five-year-old uh-huh. can understand what that means, they're crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every five-year-old would say that because they want their parent to be proud. Mm-hmm. And so I told her, hey, I want to be the best football player in the state. I said, okay, what number do you want to be? And this is as simple as it is. I said, I want to be five. <laughs> and I wanted to be five because I was five years old. And yeah. that's the only reason why I chose number five and I stuck with it. Mm-hmm. And so the, I've, I've always been five un- until the yeah. NFL. And there were some times when I was little mm-hmm. like, where I couldn't get number five. I, would, I, I got other numbers. But that is why I had number five. But when I told my dad that, my dad was the one who went through the work. So mm-hmm. you live right down the street from Honolulu Zoo. Uh-huh. I cannot stand Honolulu Zoo. <laughs> you did tell me. Okay, we got to go through this story because I know the story. <laughs> but you got to tell it for I cannot <laughs> stand that place, bro. Yeah. I, li- I currently live in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've lived in San Diego since I was drafted by the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Nine years ago, mm-hmm. eight years ago. I have yet to go to the San Diego Zoo, bruh, because of this experience, okay? So when I was at, when that five-year-old kid told his parent that he wants to be the best in the state, my dad took it literally. Like, he took it serious. Every year in the summer, around summertime, college, college coaches would come down to Hawaii and hold coaching clinics. My dad, every Saturday, every weekend, would come to University of Hawaii or wherever it was mm-hmm. and go to these coaching clinics every single weekend. But while he went to the clinics, my mom would take me and my sisters to the zoo. <laughs> every weekend, bro, and you know the story. Yeah. Every single weekend, I saw the same 
monkey sitting on a tree and i was like bruh <laughs> i hate bro after the 10th time i was like mom i can walk through the zoo with my eyes closed bro i i hate coming to the zoo why are we at the zoo right come to find out dad i found out later that dad was going to these coach cl clinics so that he could be the best coach to teach his son who, who wanted to be at five years old the best player in the state mm -hmm. And so we would come home, and I remember my dad showing me like VHS tapes of like University of Nebraska linebackers and go, them going through drills. And I was a little kid, bro, six, yeah. seven, eight years old, like watching these guys. And you know, we're watching them. He's like, watch how they go over the bags. Watch how they use their hands. Look at this drill. And we would go out and mm -hmm. in the street and try to do it. But be honest, like you probably one of the only people that know. People see like me now, mm -hmm. right? They see how I run. They see how some things come easy to me. Mm -hmm. Bro, I was uncoordinated as a kid. Like, I remember my pops used to put the cam recorder that we got mm -hmm. on top of the trash can and, and film me running. Like, we ran so many sprints just to get my gait right. Yeah. Because I looked like I had two left feet running, bro. <laughs> yeah. But it took years and years and years and years, yeah. hours and hours of just me and him out on the street running. Yeah. High knees. Yeah. Getting up, bring your feet over, pick your knees up, your arm swing, keep them at 90. Yeah. You're, you're, you're breaking past 90, you know, yeah. hours, bro, yes. to get to just run. <laughs> yeah. And then you start teaching football. Yeah. So my dad trained me ever since I was five to be the best player in the state. The most important part of that whole thing, though, was when I was in eighth grade, I was at Punahou and my dad told me, I'm not gonna train you anymore. I'm not. I'm not gonna train you unless you ask me to. Okay. <clears throat> Prior to that, he would come home at 4 p.m. from work every day. I'd hear the, the we had a Bronco. Mm -hmm. I'd hear the Bronco come, I was like, oh, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Gotta run my mile, gotta do these sprints, gotta do the ladders. Bro, we was doing ladders before anybody even knew what ladders was, bro. <laughs> We was doing the five dot thing before any, mm -hmm. we had this, I, bro, we sprayed silver spray paint in our driveway and was doing ladders, the five dots, mm -hmm. we was doing like some ISO holds, like <laughs> dad was researching everything. And I remember yeah. De La Salle came down here mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. De La Salle came to play St. Louis and Long Beach Poly came to play Coco years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was at that game and a lot of De La Salle's warmups, I did. And so my dad was like, see, yeah. son, that's, that's what you do. Meanwhile, all the Hawaii schools was doing the regular high knees, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. That's, but it was my dad understanding where he wanted his sons to go mm -hmm. and what he needed to do to get me there. So eighth grade comes and he tells me, I'm not going to train you until you, you, you ask me. So I was like, oh, perfect. perfect. I'm going to chill. Yeah. When that car drove up, sure enough, dad came in, he said, hey, Sat down, started eating, and I'm sitting there like, he not gonna let me sit here. <laughs> yeah. Bruh, that didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So for two weeks, I didn't train at all. Yeah. But I had been such a machine mm -hmm. that I was used to a certain production. Yeah. Like, as a kid, I was used to my body being able to do certain things, me not get winded doing other things, mm -hmm. and just, doing simple things play with my friends on the street mm -hmm. playing at school mm -hmm. i started to feel things start to just drop off drop off and i remember i can't remember specifically when it was but my pops is i i i, I was like bro i'm losing it and i went up to my dad i said dad mm -hmm. can you train me and that was important why drew because that was when his dream became Switch. mine. Yes. And I took ownership of that. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who, I grabbed that flame and I took off. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it, it went as far as I would take it, not mm -hmm. how far dad would take it. I, yeah. Dad did everything he, did, he needed to do already. Now, mm -hmm. if I wanted to be successful, it had to be on me. Yeah. And yeah. so that was the passing of the torch there. And that, that's what, that single moment is what helped me to understand the importance of hard work, sacrifice, mm -hmm. dedication, mm -hmm. and, and ownership. Because mm -hmm. you can't be great if it's somebody else's dream. Yep. 
It has to be yours. Yes. If you're doing stuff because somebody else wants you to do it, you ain't gonna be worth jack. <laughs> so that for me was another addition to my testimony of, of passion. Mm-hmm. It's gotta be you. It's gotta be you. It's gotta yeah. be. No, that's so true. And I'm glad you filled in that story mm-hmm. because I think what you described pretty much is that, I mean, your dad did everything that he needed to do, right? He mm-hmm. invested in you, he poured everything. But at that young age, we don't even realize how to create consistency Mm -hmm. or habits because I mean, we're just growing up. It's part of the learning process and the growth process. But after that, because your habits were so strong, like you said, Mm -hmm. and you recognize a certain level of performance, when that started to drop off, Mm -hmm. you know, the light bulb clicked, like, okay, I can't have both. I can't not work at this, not have the passion for it and still perform at this level. And when you took that torch, like you said, that's the key thing and that's the growth. Yeah.